Hey guys, welcome to Data Track, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. In today's video, we will look at one of the recent blog posts published by Meta, which is scaling the Instagram Explore recommendation system. This is one of the most well written blog posts I have read on recommendation systems. People who wants to get started with recommendation systems or want to know more about recommendation system, this blog will beautifully introduce you to the core components of today's modern world recommendation systems and people who are already working on recommendation systems or are working professionals, we will touch upon the nitty gritty details of each component and how they have beautifully highlighted it. So let's get started. What I have done, I have uh, copied the content of this blog and highlighted some of the main portions which I will take you through. Scaling the Instagram Explore recommendation system. Explore is one of the largest recommendation systems on Instagram and they have leveraged machine learning to make sure people see the most interesting and relevant content. And uh, every day, hundreds of millions of people visit Explore on Instagram and discover something new, making it one of the largest recommendation surfaces on Instagram. And uh, the whole recommendation system consists of a multi-stage ranking where these are the core uh, layers of the recommendation system. First is the retrieval stage, second is the first stage ranking. Then comes the second stage ranking and lastly comes the final re-ranking. And for retrieval, they have used two tower neural network model. So this is the flowchart diagram, which will make more sense once we have understood the whole uh, recommendation system. But this is what they are saying that there are multiple sources and uh, the retrieval selects the uh, best candidates from each sources and suffers and merge it. In the first stage ranking, they again use a two tower model to filter out some of the contents which might not be very interesting and in the final or in the second stage ranking only the interesting components will go which is a multitask multi-level model we will see all of these things in details it will predict a value function and uh, finally there will be a final re-ranking or ranked media where there will be some sorts of filtering before showing the content to user we will see and revisit this diagram at end um, of the blog post as well so it makes more sense and also we are able to connect the dots so uh, also in this blog they have uh, revealed that there is a clever use of caching and pre-computation in different ranking stages different ranking stages means retrieval first ranker second ranker and the final re-ranking retrieval first stage ranking second stage ranking and final re-ranking in all the components there is clever use of caching and pre-computation so first understand the retrieval phase so what is retrieval in uh, if there was infinite computational power and no latency requirement for a user it's a personalized recommendation system for a user we could have ranked all the content now what is content it can be a photo it can be a video everything which is you see in the feed in instagram is a content now if we had infinite computational power or no latency re requirement we could have ranked all the content and only shown to the user which are the most relevant or highest ranked uh, content for that user but that is not the case we don't have infinite computational power and latency is a big issue so in real world requirements uh, where there are requirements and constraints most large state recommendation systems employ a multi-stage funnel approach where uh, the first stage retrieval starts with thousands of candidates and it narrows down to few hundreds as we go to the last stage of the funnel which is the uh, re-ranking re or ranking layer so we start not with all the candidates candidate means everything that can come on the feed photo video everything so we don't start with all the candidates we start with start with thousands of candidates and how we get those thousands of candidates which are most relevant for the user we will see that so basically we start with thousands of candidates through the retrieval phase and as we go down the funnel as we go through the first ranker second ranker and final re-ranking we keep filtering the um, uh, content or redu keep reducing this uh, thousands of candidates to few hundreds and uh, in most large scale recommended system the retrieval stage consists of multiple candidates retrieval sources the main purpose of a source is to select hundreds of relevant items from a media pool of billions of items once we fetch candidates from different sources we combine together and pass them to the ranking model so basically there are billions of items and uh, the idea of multi-candidate retrieval sources is that we will pick thousands of, uh, out of billions of items, we will pick thousands of uh, items and it 
it won't be like uh, there is one source from which we are picking thousands of candidates but in retrieval also we will have multiple retrieval sources and from each source we will pick hundreds hundreds and finally we will get the thousand candidates so what what are these different sources it can be based on heuristic let's say we show user which are the trending posts also it can be one source can be uh, from their recent interaction if they have liked or commented in particular type of post we can show more posts like that for example i am interested in ufc which is a uh, uh, fighting sport if i follow a mixed martial arts or some sports page then i should see more content around it so this heuristic could be trending post it could be from the recent interaction or it can be from the pre generated uh, source which is long term interest we know that user might have short term interest on something but as a long term he is interested in data science so uh, so continuously data science content should also be there there can be short term interest like mixed martial arts or some uh, recent trending post or recent trends uh, and so on but there is also a long term interest of the user that can also act as a source so we saw that there can be multiple sources and for each source we will have hundreds of candidates which will add together to become thousands of candidates in the retrieval stage and uh, this diagram beautifully shows that there can be some candidates which are heuristic based heuristic based like just uh, the recent trends or the authors you follow their content and there can be uh, also a ml based approach where it could be from a two tower uh, neural network what is two tower neural network we'll come to that and also some of the candidates can be real time as soon as you interact on something so similar candidates like those there is kind of real time or it can be pre generated like uh, already we know the long term interest we can pre compute uh, some of the candidates so it can be real time pre computed it could be heuristic based or ml based but in this way there can be multiple sources of retrieval and uh, so same thing they have also revealed that candidates from pre generated sources can be generated offline in off peak hours uh, which further contributes to uh, the system scalability so we know the pre generated source like we know the long term interest of user or long term interest topic so for those we can get can generate the candidates uh, offline and as i was saying some of the candidates can be through ml based approach as well and this ml based approach is two tower neural network it's a very popular um, uh, neural network architecture for retrieval where we say there are two tower one tower is for uh, user and one tower is for uh, items items in this case can be photo video that user might be interested in and this two tower neural network is uh, motivated from word to back architecture and uh, high level high level overview how the two tower retrieval works so there are two towers as i was saying one is user tower other is the item tower in user tower we will pass the user features in item tower we will pass the item features and how it actually works is the two tower model consists of two separate neural network one for the user and one for the item each neural network only consumes features related to their entity and outputs an embedding so this is a very interesting and important point that user tower will only have user uh, features and item tower will have only item features now there can be some user item features that how much uh, the user might be interested in this item if we know that from past user has already interacted with that item or similar kind of item uh, what is the uh, propensity of user to those kind that item or similar kind of items but we won't be able to use that kind of features here that kind of features makes a lot of sense when we'll go to ranking layer which is more heavier but in retrieval it's purposefully the user features and item features are kept separate so user features can only go to the user tower and item features can go to the item tower keeping the whole architecture lightweight because if you just think if there are user cross item features there can be let's say uh, billions of users and also there will be billions of items so billion cross billion will become exponential there will be too many permutation combination possible and model will become very um, heavy weighted but to keep this uh, two tower model as lightweight as possible user features will only go to user tower item features will only go to item tower though you can do some uh, smart grouping of topics and find the user interest in those topics and keep it as a Uh, feature in your user tower but not specifically user how much user is interested in a particular item those kind of features we can have in the ranking layer but not in the retrieval layer not in the two tower model so that is what it's it mentions each neural network only consume features related to their entity and outputs an embedding what is an embedding so basically the user features will go to user tower item features will go to item tower and output will be 
item embedding, user embedding. The dot product will be done and you will get a single value. And that single value we will compare uh, with the actual label 0 or 1 that has this user clicked in this item or not or has this user not clicked on this item or not. So in that way the loss uh, will be reduced as we train the neural network. The learning objective is to predict engagement events which can be something like liking a post as a similarity measure between user and item embedding as I was just explaining. After training, the user embedding should be close to the embeddings of relevant item for a given user. Therefore, item embedding close to the user embedding can be used as a candidate for ranking. Very, very important and critical point. It's saying that after a training, user embedding will have some distribution, item embedding will have some distribution and they needs to have the similar distribution and when item and user embeddings are very similar to each other, the dot product will be one and we can say that user has more propensity towards a particular item. So, this similarity in the distribution will be learned after the model is trained. So this is the retrieval layer and also some more nitty gritty details given the user and item towers are independent after training we can use this tower separately. We can use the item towers to generate embeddings for an item that can be used as a candidate during retrieval and it can be a daily basis offline pipeline. So basically after this uh, model is trained, we can chop off the user tower and item tower. Item tower, we can generate the item embedding which can be more of an offline setup and for user embedding, we can have more of an online setup. And um, for the item embedding which was the offline setup, we can do approximate nearest neighbor using fires and all these uh, ANN libraries to quickly find that given an item which the user interacted with which could be the other similar items. And uh, the user tower will be an online retrieval. As soon as the user comes, his recent interactions features will be used to create a user embedding. And depending on the user embedding, we can fetch the top relevant item which has the highest propensity of user interacting with them. Um, we can serve in the feed. So it's saying that user tower is kept online because we want the freshest user side features. And it's also important to keep in mind model can't consume user item interaction that I was explaining that user can will tower will have user features item tower will have item features but not user item interactions which are usually the most powerful because by consuming them we will lose the ability to provide cacheable user item embedding. So basically the same thing to keep the model as lightweight as possible we can chop up the user tower item tower and use them for offline and online setup those won't be possible if we have these user item features which we will definitely use user item features uh, later in the ranking but not in the retrieval. The two tower approach is that user and item embeddings can be cached and making inference for the two tower model extremely efficient. So this is what they have shown that uh, the item tower can be offline and user tower can be online. And uh, from the item tower we can retrieve similar items and also one more thing they have said that like we uh, from the item tower given the user interaction we can find similar items. but it can happen that user clicked on something randomly. So it's important to select only the good items based on user's interaction history. So for them, uh, because the item could have been randomly clicked for them, what they do, they use, it, use a rule based approach and filter out the poor quality items based on sexual objections or that items has too many reports. And one thing I want to clarify the item item as I say in uh, this uh, video, item refers to media which could be uh, the image or video that you see in the Instagram feed. Now coming to the ranking stage, as we have seen in the beginning, ranking was also three phased. One was first rank, uh, stage ranking, second stage ranking and final re-ranking. So let's understand the ranking phase. After candidates are retrieved, retrieved, we need to rank them by value to the user. We know these are the top candidates user needs to see, which are the top media user needs to see, but what would be the rank ordering of that? So ranking is a high load system and divided into multiple stages. The first stage ranker which is a lightweight model is less precise and less computationally intensive because we will pass it through thousands of candidates for each user. So it needs to be lightweight while the second stage ranker will only have the final 100 candidates so it can be a heavy model which is more precise and compute intensive. So uh, that's why two stage approach to rank candidates is used and it maintains a high quality of final recommendations uh, and as well as uh, we are able to ensure that we are sending many uh, sources of retrieval. So basically one question you can ask is that if we finally want just 100 candidates why not simply send 100 from the beginning. We don't want to do that because in retrieval we mix 
different sources of candidates. It could be from recent uh, interaction, it could be recent trending posts, it can be the media from uh, authors user follow or it can be from uh, two tower ml model there can be different sources and we want to filter it out gradually and in a more smarter and ml way through the first stage ranker second stage ranker and so on so first stage ranker is lightweight and uh, uh, for both stages we choose neural network because this is again interesting point why neural network is choose for first stage and second stage ranker we know why it was chosen for the retrieval, which is two tower model. But how why is it chosen even for ranker is that it's important to able to adapt to the changing trends and user behavior very quickly. And uh, utilizing the continual online training, me meaning we can retrain or fine tune the neural network every hour. We can take the last weights and just fine tune it from with the recent interaction with the new data. So it allows uh, neural network so it makes neural network an ideal architecture because it can be continuously uh, online trained or fine tuned and as well as one more point is for categorical features the neural network is able to generate embeddings right learned embeddings neural network provide a natural way of handling categorical data by learning embeddings so these are the two main reasons why uh, neural network is used as a uh, ranking architect there is one more reason which you will see down below as we progress in the first stage ranking, our old friend, the same two tower neural network which was used for retrieval is used again because of its cache ability property and the model architecture could be similar to retrieval but the learning objective is quite different where previously it was just like learning that whether user will interact with that uh, item or interact with that post or not here the first stage ranker predicts the output of the second stage ranker with the label so this is very interesting they are using a technique called knowledge distillation. The approach uh, is it's a way of distilling knowledge from a bigger second stage model to a smaller one which is the lightweight first stage model. Let me explain it. In the retrieval phase the embeddings were learned by understanding whether the user will interact with that post or not. But in the second stage ranker what we want is we want a rank ordering of these candidates that which should come first, second and third and we couldn't pass it through a heavy ranker because it will be computer intensive. So what we do is first stage we keep a two tower model only but the output should be same as the heavier model so the knowledge distillation is used that whatever probability the actual heavier model would have predicted the lightweight model will also try to predict that probability so it's like distilling a knowledge that uh, which post should be ordered first second third and so on so it uses knowledge distillation kind of approach and you can see that user features and here comes the item features but the learning objective will be different here it will predict the output or probability very similar to the heavy ranker now coming to the second stage ranking uh, after the first stage ranking we apply the second stage ranking uh, after the first stage ranking we would have already filtered out some bottom candidates which are not as good as the above candidates which or, or the good media with the not so good media uh, after the first stage ranker, we apply the second stage ranker which predicts the probability of different engagement events, click, like, etc. using multitask uh, label neural network model. So as I was explaining before, use, use of neural network is because of few reasons. One, we can continuously fine tune it every hour. Secondly, for categorical features, it can learn embeddings. And third reason is this, that uh, a single model can predict different engagement events. Like a single neural network can predict the probability of click, like, uh, share and so on. So they use this multitask, multi-label neural network which will be one neural network architecture which will be predicting all these labels. The MTML which is multitask, multi-label neural network is much heavier than the two tower models but it can consume the most powerful user item interaction features. The user item interaction features which we are not using because those are very costly. Here it can be used because we have to just rank the uh, top 100 candidates, but that ranking has to be very accurate. That's why we are using the powerful user item interaction features only in the second stage ranking. Applying a much heavier multitask multi-label model during peak hours could be tricky. That's why we pre-compute recommendation system for some user during off-peak hours. This helps us ensure the availability of recommendations for every explore user. So doing this like uh, retrieval, first stage ranking, second stage ranking is definitely very useful. But for some of the users which don't visit the app very frequently which who are called the explore user for them uh, the feed can be generated offline as well because 
there is less chances of them coming so we don't need very frequent updates for but for the users which are very active which keep visiting the app at every um, half an hour or one hour for them it needs to continuously predict and uh, now uh, what happens in order to produce the uh, final score now we know that we have multi labels it could be click like see less etc et right to predict the final score which will be a function of p click p like p c less etc right like because we have different probabilities now we don't know how much contribution to give to each of the probabilities so finally a function has to be learned which is called value model vm vm is equal to w click into p click plus w like into p like minus w c less into p c less so we need to learn the weightage how much contribution we need to give to each type of interaction so how that parameter tuning can be done it can be done in two ways one is through the bayesian optimization and second is offline tuning in bayesian optimization you explore in real time that different weights and see that where the model is converging converging as in you must have some goal like finally you want uh, at least this much uh, percentage of conversion and all so at what weights for different interaction events the performance is best you will learn through bayesian optimization in real time the advantage is that uh, bayesian optimization you just need to provide it with the goals and all and uh, goal optimization it will perform and find you the best weights the disadvantage is that sometimes it can take lot of time to converge and when you are dealing with lot of parameters there can be high sensitivity and other approach will be offline tuning which is much faster in offline tuning you use the historical data to find how the change in weights might have changed the offline matrix or the online matrix because you can calculate the mef which is uh, mean average precision or ndcg and see that how the other uh, goals that you want to achieve let's say not so bad contents and all how much is that goal being satisfied by tweaking these weights in through the historical data and through this offline uh, finding of parameters you uh, you can come up with the weights and uh, there also you can use bayesian optimization technique but is but in the offline uh, process the advantage is that compared to online bayesian optimization it requires a lot less time to experiment and come up with weights however there needs to be enough strong correlation between offline and online matrix so basically you need to have enough variation in the offline data you need to have lot of historic data and enough variation in the historic data that you can actually find that uh, tweaking this weight whatever uh, historical data you are getting some insights that has high correlation in the online matrix that is it would have actually happened the same way in the online setup as well so these are two methods one is bayesian optimization real time you find the weights uh, find the uh, you exploit explore the weights where the performance of neural network is best and second is offline tuning where you can still decide your goal and from the historical data find come up with some weights and experiment and uh, uh after the second stage ranking which is applying a heavier multi task multi label model and finding this uh, weights for each uh, of the probability types you can rank them comes the final re ranking what happens in final re ranking uh, we don't want to just sort or instagram doesn't just want to sort the items on media based on this final uh, value model score vm score but they want to filter out or down rank some items based on integrity related stores which is something like uh, uh, some harmful content they would want to uh, remove or deboost also they would want to increase diversity that is it should not happen that same authors uh, media is continuously shown so they would like to add some diversity so whatever the rank score they get from value model score they uh, that ranking they take it and put some rules like there shouldn't be any harmful content or some particular kind type of content they want to boost or deboost as well as to ensure the diversity that they are not seeing same type of content or same author content at some uh, swaps there and uh, in this way after in this finally ranking the final recommendations are presented to the users and they have also finally told that uh, systems are growing and things are becoming uh, tough to maintain and uh, so uh, our systems growing complexity will pose new challenges in terms of maintainability and feedback loops to address this challenge we plan to continuously improve our current models and adopt a new ranking model and retrieval sources we also investigate how to consolidate our retrieval strategies into a small number of highly customizable ml models so that's the whole blog 
let's just quickly revisit that flowchart which will make more sense we have multiple media which comes in the retrieval phase and we shuffle and merge and then we pass it through the first stage rankle which is again a two tower model uh, but it it is trying to mimic the probability of a heavier second stage ranking model just using a lightweight model which is two tower model in this phase and as well as here also uh, we have uh, ml based retrieval where uh, a two tower model would be used with the objective of predicting the interactions uh, clearly but the two tower model in the ranking phase which is the first stage ranking has different objective to predict the probability of actual heavy ranker as accurately as possible and then comes the in second stage the actual heavy multitask multi level model which predicts different probabilities and we find the con uh, weights or contribution of each probability you want to give in the final ranking which we call as value model it's a function of different weights to different probabilities and finally there is a re-ranker uh, layer again to ensure that there is diversity and not obscene content or deboost or boost some special type of content as their business rules uh, and so on so these are the uh, different stages of recommendation system in instagram and mostly uh, this is how the recommendation system in general also work there will be retrieval phase ranking phase here they have uh, two ranking phases first stage and second stage and finally there is a re-ranking based on some business rules so hope you liked and enjoyed the contents please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more such updates bye